It is my pleasure to welcome you at this special session to commemorate the Diamond Jubilee of the All India Management Association. Honorable President of India, Mr. Pranab Mukherjee, many thanks for joining us today and a very warm welcome to you. It is a unique privilege for IMA to have you with us on this momentous occasion. We are extremely grateful to you for accepting our request to release the commemorative plaque celebrating IMA's Diamond Jubilee and also for graciously agreeing to inaugurate IMA's new building. It is a tremendous honor for IMA and we are grateful. Mr. Munjal, your outstanding leadership of IMA through its Diamond Jubilee year has been inspirational. You have made this year special and unique for IMA, with many new peaks reached under your leadership. Preeta, Dr. Juneja, many thanks for joining us at this event. IMA owes its uninterrupted success to the contribution of leaders like you. We are privileged to have a very special audience for a very special occasion. We have many of the IMA past presidents and council members with us today. We are also joined by a galaxy of brilliant artists and celebrities and many well-wishers of IMA. Ladies and gentlemen, we are honored by your personal presence and it is indeed a pleasure to have you with us today and a very warm welcome to you. IMA has come a long way since it was founded in 1957. It started as a think tank to promote modern management in the country and today it is a multifaceted builder of India's management capability. IMA has built many national and international platforms to generate new ideas and to recognize excellence. It provides management education and training, and it also delivers testing services for admissions and recruitments. Recently, IMA has joined the National Mission for Skill Development by creating a council to offer management and entrepreneurial skills. And now, our next big agenda is to set up the National Case Research Center in the country. IMA has continuously evolved with times and taken on new responsibilities to meet the changing demands of the Indian economy. A dynamic and learning organization, IMA will always be contemporary and will always be a pillar of the country's management strength. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a special milestone as IMA completes 60 years of building management capability in the country. Having the Honorable President of India with us today is a moment to cherish for all of us at IMA and we are truly grateful for this honor. With these words, may I now request Mr. Sunil Munjal to present a memento to the Honorable President of India to mark this very special occasion. This is truly a special occasion where IMA is celebrating its 60th year with one of India's true statesmen. Mr. President, you have been a unique leader in many ways. Right through your career, we have dealt with you in many different capacities. And each time, we found you a person who thinks not just of himself, but of the nation and the nation's future. What you have done here in Rashtrapati Bhavan is an amazing transformation of making this a place which is open to public, which is open to ideas, which is looking at areas like higher education and management. I know that you turned higher education into one of your passions, and right through the five years, you've held events, conferences, workshops, and seminars, where you have invited ideas and ideation on what India needs to do to transform its education, looking at the future of what we hope will be amongst the greatest nations in the world. You also opened up this amazing facility for people to see 
right across different parts of Rashtrapati Bhavan that have been opened up. There is history. There is, of course, a legacy. But by bringing it into the present, cleaning and clearing it up and making access for people at large, you've made Rashtrapati Bhavan one of the high points of a visitor's delight when they come and visit Delhi. All India Management Association does consider this a special year in many, many different ways. Not only is it celebrating 60 years, it is also celebrating its relationship with India, with Indians, Indian management, Indian education, and what it has been able to do around the world. So the celebrations this year are not just taking place in India. We have already been to a few places overseas, and by the time the year of the Diamond Jubilee is over, we would have done at least six global events in addition to the many within the country. There are also a whole host of new initiatives that are being launched to strengthen IMA's positioning in management, also to meet the needs of India, looking at how we can create more economic opportunities, how employment can be improved, how more innovation and research becomes the center of the way we think. We have seen this from many of our leaders. They don't just set out to go and become leaders. They go out to do the right things. And they do become, Mr. President, only a few of them leaders such as yourselves. A statesman who's crossed the boundary from politics to be a true statesman leading the nation and making us all proud. We do hope that as IMA takes on more in its responsibility, it is, as you're aware, also launching another building for itself where it will do more work in education more work in innovation, more work for startups, as also more work for research. The new case research center that is being set up will be the first independent case research center set up for Indian studies. Because for long, we have depended on studies from overseas or those done only by universities. We hope to make this a more real and a more approachable experience for all of us, for industry, for intellectuals, for academics, and for students. We also want to thank you, Mr. President, for giving us this wonderful facility to have this special celebration for the 60th year of IMA and for the inauguration of this new building. Thank you very much, and have a good evening. We would request Honorable President of India to make this moment memorable by unveiling a commemorative plaque to mark the Diamond Jubilee of IMA, and also inaugurate IMA's new building in Delhi. It's a pleasure for me to be present amidst you this evening when we are celebrating the Diamond Jubilee of IMA. You can be proud of sustaining a culture of excellence for six decades. The achievements of the last 60 years I'm sure shall motivate you to even greater heights 
in the years to come. When you began your journey in 1957, country was entered into the phase of industrialization because the major industrial policy thrust was given in 1956 industrial policy resolution. It was the launching of the second five-year plan period. And subsequently, you have seen how India progressed. And from a country, when it began its independence 70 years ago, and 10 years before, you began your journey. It was one of the poorest country of the world for more than half a century, from 1900 to 1950, the economy registered just below 1% annual average GDP growth. You name anything. India was in deficit. At that juncture, your organization took a giant leap, I must say, not in darkness, but with definite aims and objectives that we must come out, fully exploit our potentials, particularly amongst our youths, give them the managerial tools, sharpen their skills, and make them the best available managers to manage. It is not merely the management of material, it is also the management of ethos, a culture, and also to carry on the legacy of a heritage which is of 5,000 years old civilization. Today, if Indian managers all over the world are considered as the best managers and are in high demand for almost every sector. And there is a keen competition, which being in administration for a very long period of time, I saw when the option to choose a career comes, the bright men and women are in doubt whether to join the civil service or to join the business and enterprises and manage and face the challenge. Today, India's economy, as I mentioned, in the backdrop of half a century's backwardness, almost 200, two centuries backwardness, but just in the context of which India became independent. And thereafter, the strides today, it is regarded as one of the fastest growing economy in the emerging economy in the world. Yes, there may be slight, there may be ups and downs in the long history of our developmental process. There have been moments of encouragement, success, pride, and there has been moments of depression, frustration. But keeping aside, that sense of depression and frustration, country moved ahead. As a result to that, I'm just giving you one example, a country 
which almost lived from sip to mouth, even up to mid-seventies, after thirty years of independence. But today, the country is producing more than 274 million tons of grain. It is self-sufficient in to meet its own requirement and also producing exportable surplus. Similarly, in industries, in technologies, in almost every area, we have made remarkable progress. And yet, I must say, we are managing. When I shut my mind, eyes and think in my mind, 1.3 billion people living in 33, 3.3 million square kilometers, speaking in 200 languages in everyday life, practicing seven religions, belonging to three major ethnic groups, Dravidians, Caucasians, Mongolites, yet under one system, one flag, one constitution, we have been able to manage the largest functional democracy of the world, where 67 percent of 800 million people exercise their most important political right in choosing their rulers, in selecting 543 members of parliament from snow capped Himalaya to Sri West South and from forests of Mizoram to Dwarka. Therefore, the management is the most significant aspect of the advancement and progress. I must congratulate Mr. Munjal for the initiatives which they have taken, particularly to emphasize on the development of skills and inputs in the students, in the youth. We speak of demographic dividend. No doubt, more than 50 percent of Indian people today are in the age group of 20 and below, 25 and below. India will have the largest number of working forces. And this advantage we may have for some time more. But this dividend will not pay us true dividend if we cannot convert these youth forces, working forces, into productive employment. And for that we require employability. And to have employability we must have the skilled persons. Therefore, we shall have to impart trainings, skills, and enhance their employability so that the entire world market is available to them. Sometimes I shudder to think that what would happen if we fail to achieve this objective every year, 10 million persons entering into the job markets and not adequate job creation is being done. Therefore, we shall have to depend on startups. We shall have to start small businesses. We shall have to start employment opportunities by becoming employers, not merely job seekers. And for that, for that, 
we require a huge management cadre who will manage all aspects from material to cultural to philanthropic and spiritual also corporate social responsibility is just not mere a phraseology but it gives a clear signal that the society to which you belong the environment in which you are functioning you must link it with up and by addressing some of the pressing problems of the locality of the environment of the society you can make yourself inevitable a part of that system where they will also feel that you are not outsider you are not just making money in that area but you are an integral part of that system and environment i wish you all success aima has already earned its name and you are completing 60 years when you will complete centenary many of us will not be there but surely the continuation of the institutions ideas principles philosophies that survive and that survive for many many years the principles the ideology the philosophy behind establishing aima 60 years ago would remain relevant to update our skill to make our knowledge updated worldly changing fast technological changes are mind boggling and always change of technology brings disruption to manage that disruption is the job of a true manager you are doing that i wish you all success and a very very glorious future thank you ladies and gentlemen jai hind it's indeed a pleasure to be with all of you this evening and to propose a vote of thanks it's a privilege to thank our honorable president for joining us in celebrating aima's diamond jubilee and sir for sharing your thoughts with us you are an incredible statesman and it has been an honor and a privilege to listen to you thank you for making our 60th year truly special we are grateful for your kind words about aima and your encouragement is profoundly motivating for us so also your hospitality and your presence you have given us many pointers for our future efforts and your insights will certainly help us do better aima is truly privileged that you have inaugurated its new premises and we will assure you that we will work together for a nation a nation that you will be proud of and for a future to make india stronger and better india is truly a magnificent country with diverse cultures and requ and requires a very for a very forward thinking activity to meet the demands of changing times the organization is acquiring new capabilities and starting new initiatives to serve the cause of indian management the new building is one step in the right direction indian ceos occupy the corner suite of some of the largest american conglomerates and indian businessmen and maybe indian business women too are a force which have gained respect globally one of the new key initiatives is the case research center research and data gathering has been the weak link in indian management association in indian business schools have been using borrowed case studies from overseas to teach management and that deprives the students of clear insights into the uniquely indian challenges and solutions imas case research center will address this issue and also develop 
an Indian narrative of business leadership and management best practices. Skill development, which is something everyone's been hearing about so much, is another important initiative, and AIMA is completely committed to this cause. It has democratized the Postgraduate Management Association in the past, and is now set to open management and entrepreneurship skills to all. The aim is not only to improve the value addition by every employee, but also to, Im to improve the employability of Indian youth, which is the biggest obstacle to job creation and, ev and even bigger than automation. I must add adding new management courses, conferences, retreats, and workshops all the time. We aim to help Indian enterprises deal with the shifting trends in growth, globalization, technology, and governance. These are challenging times, but AIMA is still young, even though we are celebrating 60 years, and is completely up to the challenge. I once again thank the Honorable President of India for his blessings and for inaugurating the new premises and for our Diamond Jubilee year. I also thank all the distinguished IMA leaders, members, and well-wishers, especially our esteemed past presidents again, some of whom who have joined us today, because they all helped IMA become the vibrant and versatile organization that it is today. Ladies and gentlemen, it has been truly a memorable evening for me personally and for all of us, and we will cherish this forever. I take the privilege of concluding this special occasion with the Honorable President of India, and I thank everyone here for joining us.